Happy birthday, February 8th. Your power thought or affirmation is the universe runs through me, giving me direction. Another way to phrase this is the constantly flowing divine force of allness, ether, is within me, unseen, unknowing, but constant. The way you choose to phrase it is your own. Take your own vibrations and your own energy and go with that. Your archetype for your birthday is the hypnotist. If this resonates with you, take it, as well as anything else I say in this video. Take the energies with it. I will restate it when I feel needed. But your free will supersedes any zodiac, archetype, or anything printed in any book. Your own direction of choice, your own way of being you, is more empower impactful and powerful. Try to make a word together. You are a hypnotist. And if you choose, you can hypnotize yourself. But you have to understand that the law of hypnosis states that all hypnosis must be self-hypnosis under surrender. So the idea that everybody who's ever been hypnotized somehow, some way surrendered to the hypnotism and hypnotized themselves through the whole way of the process of a true hypnotist. But it's the eyes that really hypnotize. More powerful than anything else is the eyes in hypnotism. I've studied hypnotism just a little bit. I'm not a scholar on it. But the idea of being able to change the state of thought means you can change the state of reality. It's incredibly powerful. And a, if you live your life as a hypnotist in the hypnotist grand super archetype is one of the highest, I would say there's probably like a thousand super archetypes and there's a million greater archetypes. And within those super one there's probably like a ten supreme archetypes that like generate all the other ones. The hypnotist is up there as just the the hypnotist is probably the best way to describe this archetype. There's no other words that really fit because the hypnotist is a symbolistic archetype. So, greetings and gratitude if you found this video. This video is intended for those who would like to learn more about the daily zodiacs, those who were born on this day, or those who are just curious about the super archetypes. And this is a good super archetype. So, if you did not did not already know based on this birthday here's a few clarifying information your sun sign is Aquarius your birth date ruler is the teacher the educator or the instructor your favorable numbers are 1 and 8 lucky days are Saturday that falls on the first or eighth of a month favorable colors are going to be that dark blue and greens that deep blue I roar this color here. This is a signifying color here, maybe even darker than this shade. And crocus, which is a very floral color. Crocus has many different types of colors within it. So I'm not going to elaborate on the colors, but the birthstone I will, because Amethyst for you might be really powerful compared to the other archetypes that have amethyst as a birthstone because a amethyst is naturally hypnotic. Some people can stare at a piece of amethyst for hundreds of years. There's massive pieces of amethyst chunks in people's house. And there's rose quartz, yeah, and there's clear quartz, yeah, but it's the amethyst that has this natural hypnotic quality that other ones just can't even touch. So, if this resonates with you, take it. If not, leave it. But at your best, you can be driven, but you can be uncertain. You can be charming, but overly serious. You're unassertive, but you're sensitive. I would also add, you are perceptive, but somehow removed. You know what's going on, but you're not part of the goings on.
So your thoughts, your words, your actions, your movements, your breaths, your silences, your assertions of quick stringed words moving in a way that other people can understand and perceive, but you have complete and total flow, control, you understand the ways but people think that you don't know what you're doing because you can space yourself out, you can be calm and speaking in all types of ways. I think a great thing is when you come off grave, when you come off dour, serious, too much of your energy may be perceived in a way of how they think. But think of a hypnotist. A hypnotist is whatever the perception is, can be changed by the fact that the hypnotist is one of the few archetypes that completely understands that the thoughts are theirs to choose. Because they understand that all hypnosis must be self-hypnosis. So if they hypnotize themselves for the best outcome, they can do that for other people. I like the idea of past life regression hypnosis by a skilled person who's been doing it for years. Uh, other types of forensic hypnosis, hyp hypnotism. There's a whole range of artistic hypnotism where artists pay to be hypnotized to tap into some type of artistic muse within them that they can create from. Say someone who has writer's block or painter's block or potter's block and they're not able to tap into that muse or creative force I'm using muse as a metaphor. If you have a literal physical muse, good for you. Blessings. And, but if not, the idea that you can be your own muse, you can be your own highest force through hypno hypnosis. This hypnotic effect that you have, by just being yourself, I get very clear. But you can, you really don't like those chit chat. You're not a big fan of the meaningless chatter that significance, oh hey, how are you doing, I'm doing good, that everybody does, you you might be a little bit more likely to shift that perception or that narrative when those similar types of rudimentary questions come up. But a great challenge could be that you could be um, avoiding... So... You have a natural avoidance of certain destructions, certain pains of yourself. You think you will be destroyed by certain mental perceptions. But a great teacher of mine has taught me that let yourself be killed. Let yourself be incinerated by the thing you're afraid of. Let that one thing you don't want to happen, happen. Because when it happens, you're prepared, you understand, and you have a desire to solve it in the best possible way because you've already thought of it. You've already created it in your mind and you can be hypnotic in that when it finally happens because you already thought it. You can probably either hypnotize yourself, which is the most ethical thing, or you could unethically hypnotize, which is another thing that this archetype might do. So just understand that there is an ethics in other people's perceptions of words and moods and energies. When you enter a room, you affect everybody in a way other people don't. A lot of people uh, might create worry traps or like pain around you because you might be mirroring ways that you don't fully understand. So just protect your interests and really look to just project, to make something, to be part of something that shows you what you want. For career, is really important to look into yourself what you want you want freedom you want the big picture but you also want little things like maybe designer stock market weather forecaster meteorology uh, etymology even genealogy writing acting music your great destiny if this resonates with you take it if not please leave it is that to set those boundaries to say this is okay and this is not this is what I this is what I'm willing to do this is what I'm not this is my ethical line here and this is not and by being that and being open that that line can change but it is a line and it needs to be honored for what it is because it will have an impact on other people it will show other people this greater harmony and understanding of the world. That little act of setting boundaries is one of the most powerful things to create world peace. If you want world peace, and you think, oh, we don't want any wars, 
Well, how can I make that happen? Set boundaries. That's the number one thing you can do. It's just set clear boundaries. And by doing that, you will foster more respectful relationships for people who respect other people's boundaries, which will over time lead to world peace. Piece by piece. You're not going to pave a, a pebble road at once. It's going to take time to lay each and every pebble. But each act of that, each time it shows other people seeing people laying that little pebble and over time that road gets built to the thing that you, I feel like the hypnotist wants this world peace, wants world understanding, wants world harmony. But the way to do that is by setting those boundaries now and to really to come terms with your shadow side, to understand that you need to explore the outside world, explore the full aspects of yourself, to see everything within you come perfectly in harmony. Your card is the ether. The ether symbolizes the cosmic flow of all things, the energy that is invisible but creatively known. It sees, it perceives, it perce propagates, creates itself every second, it reproduces asexually as a conscious matter that is not matter. It's basic, the paradoxical force of dark light or of light darkness, the idea that for every black hole there must be a, uh, like a white dwarf. The, the universe balances out in its energies but that inner space between the white dwarf and the black hole is the ether that where the light is both being pulled into the black darkness but it is also being projected off of the darkness that is radiating from the black hole or and this is the etheric force of all things that just middle ground uh, another way to describe it as the three forms of water. It is it is the gaseous, it's steam. It is a steam-like energy in, in its form. It could also be considered a plasma. But it's light and shadow. But it's creative light and shadow. The idea of a canvas that has been half-painted by someone else and give it to you. You don't have a full canvas, but you have creative force. So your affirmation for this card, or power thought, is to say, within this now, I am creating from the unfinished perpetuity of all things. Or phrase it in a way that works for you in your own energy, but the the main frequencies is that you are creating from this untapped vastness of universal frequency that is all around because it has to be. It is the glue that keeps the book together. It's not the page and it's not the binding, but it's the glue. It's the thing that keeps it. It is the actual woven texture of book, of old books. So that's a good visualization as well. So thank you for your powerful mind and perceptional time. I wish you a best 365 days to come.